Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In this video, we're going to go over the configure method, which is on the describe annotation. They added the ability to configure your tests inside the test file or inside the scope of a describe block, which allowed you to set if you wanted parallel or serial execution mode, if you wanted to add some retries for the tests inside a file or a scope. They've added the ability to set the test timeout. So let's jump into the tests to see what I've already set up. So I basically have a test here marked as only, which is the top level of the test file. And then I have a test scoped inside the scribe block to show you the two different use cases. Now, if you're following along, you need to make sure as well that you've updated the latest version of Playwright, which um, as I currently create this video is 1.28.1. If you haven't, you need to update it in your package JSON and then run an NPM install and you should be good to go. Now, before we get into the tests, we talked about what this kind of configuration, this configure method is on the describe. So it allows you to configure these certain options, which we talked about, which was the scope, the retries, and now the timeout. So you can configure it to top level. So put it here, put it put the statement here and it'll apply to all tests. And then you can also scope it into the describe. And that's what we're going to show now in this video. So let's go to Playwright config first and see what values we have. So we have a test timeout of uh, 10 seconds. We don't have any retries and I've turned fully parallel off. In my test, I've made sure that we actually hit the timeout as well and we fail the test. So it's looking for a random locator with a class name of fake that doesn't exist. So if I'm just to run uh, npx playwright test now and hit enter, what we should see is both these tests fail and they fail at the timeout of 10 seconds. What I should also note is you can see here as well is running two tests using one worker because we haven't added that fully parallel option yet. There we are, the first test failed. Okay, great. So both tests failed. They failed at a timeout of 10 seconds and it's because of course we forced that to fail. We never really won that no test, but I need to do this to show you the example. So now let's change these options then. And you can just change one of them or all of them. Depends which one you want to do. So we have them three options. So let's say test dot describe dot configure. And then we can change the options. You can see up here we've got a mode, retries, and timeout. So let's say mode and we'll say parallel, because we want them to run in parallel. We'll then say retries, let's say uh, one retry, that's okay, just to show you that we've set it up okay. And then we'll say timeout, and we'll just set that to something small like 3000, so three seconds. And now what's going to happen is it's going to change the values from our config file only for this test file. And these two tests now will run in parallel. They should fail and then retry again once, and they should time out after three seconds. So let's give that a go. Let's say MPX Playwright test and see what happens. So there we are. First thing is two tests using two workers. So the parallel option has been taken. You can see that they both failed with three seconds as well. So you can see the timeout has been taken and they've retried. So everything we expected has happened. Awesome. So they both failed. They've done the retries and the timeout and parallelization was working. Of course, you can check. You don't have to set them all. They're just options. So I could say I only want to have retries and timeout or maybe only one of them. For this case, I'll just keep both. Now then, let's copy this line of code and put it directly inside this describe block. So what you should expect now is the first test, which is scoped to the higher level, will use these values. But the tests inside this describe block here will use these configuration values. So let's say retry set to two and we've only got one test. So the mode doesn't matter. So I can actually remove this because that's OK. And tell you what, we'll set this to seven seconds just to show the difference. So let's hit enter. So this one will fail after three seconds and retry once. And this one will fail after seven seconds and retry twice. Of course, we still have the parallelization applied to both because I've got the mode of parallel here. There we are. First one failed after three seconds. The grouped one failed after seven. Now, retry one is happening for this example, the, the, the highest level. That will fail again after three. 
the example group ones are the only ones left i'm expecting this to fail after seven seconds and then retry one more time and there we are retry through two they failed fantastic this is a really neat and easy way to change these configuration values and i'm really happy that our playwright have added this timeout value into the latest version of playwright now before we sign off from this i just want to prove that it's only changing these files values so in this case i'm gonna rename this test file that i just duplicated to test 2.spec.ts hit enter and we're going to remove the configuration values from in here and they should now use the default values but this test one spec which we have the configure call in for both of them should still use these and not impact this test file so let's hit npx playwright test and see what happens so we have the test one spec, so we should be seeing exactly what we did before. Three second timeout and seven seconds with a bunch of retries. Here's a retry one for the two inside that test. And now we have test spec two, which should fail after 10 seconds. So keep an eye on this one. Here's a second retry of the test inside test one spec. There we are. This one failed after 10 seconds. We shouldn't expect a retry on this. And I believe now this will be the last test, which is in test spec two. And we shouldn't see any retries for this one or this. And they both fail after 10 seconds. So there we go. That's shown you how they are scoped to the specific files. And they can be used wherever you want. And it's just a really neat way of setting low values and even zero retries if you wanted to in your config. And then deciding on what type of tests you have. So you might have this test one spec could be an end-to-end test uh, file which is going to take more time so you need to up the timeout possibly add some more retries and then this test spec too could end up being atomic test so you don't really want a long test timeout for these you shouldn't really need retries because the atomic test should be so scoped to a feature that they should be quite reliable as always if you do have any questions please drop a comment below a subscribe is appreciated and thank you for watching